Hello everyone, uh, we are here to talk about FIFA 15 and you are watching Connected Digital World. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, uh, thank you for coming. I hope you are having fun as well. Yeah. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us your role? Okay, uh, my name is Sebastian Enrique. I am the lead producer uh, for FIFA 15 on Xbox One, uh, PlayStation 4 and this year PC. Uh, so you've just revealed that. Let's talk about that first then. So this is the first year that you guys will be releasing FIFA on PC. Um, what took so long? Well, it's not the first year of FIFA on PC. It's the first year of Dream 4 on PC. Uh, so I don't think a year is long uh, with comparing to, to the stuff that we do, but the reality is uh, when we were building uh, the Ignite engine for, for the next-gen consoles, so we were running in pretty tight uh, uh, schedules and pretty tight, uh, pretty tight deadlines. And basically we were building also the, so the game on Gen 3, the game on Gen 4, uh, Ignite were, was being on the works, like uh, when you have a new piece of hardware, new technology, uh, there are tons of things that, that need to be built and, and basically there are some things that you, you have to leave aside and it's like, okay, we can't really do this at this point, we need to focus on these other things. And uh, so basically that's what, what happened and, and PC was a Gen 3 title. Uh, but then after the community feedback, like everyone was uh, screaming really, okay, we want a PC title that is Gen 4, we want a PC title that is Gen 4. And uh, so the company, the, let's say, so EA and, and, and the FIFA group decided, okay, let, let, let's put a lot of effort at this to have it in this second year. And uh, so we worked uh, like with our teams, basically the, the Ignite team and to get uh, the Ignite engine working properly, uh, and what I mean properly is, is optimized, etc. On, on PC, and so that's why this year is, is community request and, and something that we also wanted to do. Great. So today's first look, you're really talking about four new pillars, yes. or four extended pillars. The first one being emotion. Now, football obviously very emotional sport, lots of fans. Do you want to tell us about some of the new emotional elements of the game? Yes, as you mentioned, like uh, the emotional intensity is, is a pillar. Uh, we really think that football is our passion, it's, it's about uh, love for your club, uh, it's about expressing yourself. Like, uh, you know, football is a roller coaster, you have those fantastic moments where you're super happy, etc. You have those moments where you're upset, sad, even crying. So I cry for my team as well, like in real life. And uh, with, with Gym 4, we have the opportunity of, of uh, more memory, more processing power, and so we can st start now like a putting our dreams or vision for, for what is the atmosphere, the representation of those emotions and passions of the sport in, in the game. So with emotional intensity, one of the most important things that we were introducing this year is what we call player emotions. Uh, so we're tracking emotions per player at all times. So the 22 players on the pitch, they have a particular emotion not only that, they also have the attitudes towards any other player on the pitch, so against every opponent, against uh, every single teammate as well. So what, what, what is that, So or what is this for? Uh, if you look in, in, in the past, what we had done is, is tracking emotions but per team, not per player. So in general, the, the, the reactions were pretty generic in that sense, of, of players uh, like uh, taking the heads when missing a shot, uh, but they didn't have the particular emotion that might be different to any other player. So we might be playing together, so we might be teammates, uh, but you are playing probably poorly, uh, like uh, your passing is, is terrible today, not putting a lot of effort, so you're having a frustrating day, so you are frustrated with yourself. Uh, but probably I'm having like a really good game with my other teammates, but I know that you're not playing well. I might be happy because we're playing well together, but I'm probably disgusted or upset with you because you would suck basically on the pitch today. <laughs> and uh, the, the, what happens in that situation is that probably when, when you do something wrong again and again and again, so I'm gonna react not like a, with a positively towards you, it's gonna be, oh, come on. So sorry, dad, what are you doing? Uh, but maybe when a teammate does something that is not good, I'm gonna just congratulate him. So all these subtle differences that you see on the, on the pitch like a week after week in, in real life, that's what we can do now. Uh, it, it's about like uh, having a proper representation of, of the emotions of each player and, and the interactions between the different players. Uh, so it's, it's not something that we're doing to change the gameplay aspect of the game, 
but it's something that we're doing to, to support that, that those emotions and, and so you're more immersed into the experience. So it's not only that, we're doing a lot of work in, in crowds, making them more visualized, uh, like a crowd in South America, different than a crowd in, in the UK, different than one in Germany, etc., etc. And bringing signature moments is, is how we call it. So you will see that the, you never walk alone uh, from Liverpool, uh, you will see that the Poznan from Manchester City, uh, like a really lot of uh, cool things to, to bring all the emotion of the sport together. Okay, great. Um, let's talk a little bit about the visuals. Obviously, they've been dramatically increased from the previous game. So yes. tell us a little bit about that. Uh, visuals is, is another of those opportunities or doors that were open for us with, with Gen 4. Uh, so on Gen 3, we had certain limit, uh, limited processing power and our priority was always gameplay and the rest in terms of visuals and presentation was okay let, let's improve but but never in a massive way because we couldn't so basically gameplay was taking everything in terms of memory and processing power gen 4 is different so we have much more room to play with so we can start doing visuals like crazy like really really uh, executing on our visions in terms of visuals uh, year one of gen 4 was uh, as I mentioned before, it's learning the hardware, it's, it's a lot of things. But in parallel, we were working on a physically based rendering technology. So what, what is that? So let me explain a bit. Uh, what physical based rendering is modeling how illumination works in real life. So what, what does it mean in real life? Like the physical properties. So it's not just a light source being the sun or whatever it is, like a hitting a ray on my face. So the sun is also hitting the wall, the wall is bouncing that light and illuminating as well my face. So if I had a red wall over here, you would see a hint of red on my face. And uh, this is because the light bounces everywhere. So we're modeling that now in the game, and when you look at the visuals, it really feels much more integrated. So you are seeing today in the presentation, like a screenshot from FIFA 14, like a capture from real life uh, footage, and a FIFA 15 like a results with with this new lighting technology and the results are outstanding like really the 15 image looks extremely similar to how it looks in real life so we're very happy with that and then we're adding tons of details fixing and so we call it fixing because it's it's improving a lot massively the the, the look of the player model the animation rig how we call it to to really bring together like a lot of things that are really difficult to do in terms of animations like at the arms, the shoulders, uh, are extreme poses that are difficult to achieve. Well, we're putting a lot of work on that so to get a more accurate representation of players. And not only that, so it's on the pitch itself. You start seeing all the, the, the footmarks, how it gets deteriorated, and we're using not, not random noise, but basically capturing every single footstep, every single slide, also considering the strength of that footstep, the slides, and you see how the pitch gets deteriorated uh, over time. So it's fantastic stuff in terms of visuals. Excellent. And obviously the most important thing there being is you've got hair movement. Uh, yeah, of course. So, so the hair movement is, is a nice little detail. So there are many players there with, with long hair. Uh, it looks fantastic, I think. And uh, there are more things to come, but, but those we're going to tell you in the future. Excellent. So also you've done quite a lot of work with the intelligence of the AI. Yes. So do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, for us, uh, AI so is, is how your teammates play in terms to support you uh, to assemble plays, to have a more, uh, like let's say, more fun but, but also real football experience. And then it's the AI in terms of the opponents. Uh, so we don't want an opponent that feels robotic, that feels a computer. So we want an opponent that feels human. So when, when why, one of the reasons of why people love playing online or playing with your mates like a, on, on a couch, uh, like a Saturday night, is because you're playing a, a different game all the time. So the humans think differently in general than what you can achieve with a computer. But we're doing a lot of work so that computer plays more like a human. One of those things is what we call team tactics. So team tactics, you will say, hey, tactics were in football all the time, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's a name that we're putting to behavior. So what we're doing is players, uh, instead of thinking just on a frame to frame and deciding what to do, now they have short, medium, and long-term objectives. 
So if you watched uh, Champions League final, uh, the, the, it was last weekend, it was uh, Atletico Madrid against Real Madrid. At the end of the match, at the end of the 90 minutes, you could see Atletico really parking the bus. Like, we got to defend this lead no matter what. And when they were, when they were having the ball, maybe just trying to time waste a bit, having position to time waste, otherwise clearance, clearance, clearance. Real Madrid, that usually plays good football, it was just sending the ball up. Let's try to score no matter what. You see this many, many times in football, in real life. Then the situation changed. So it was Real Madrid just parking the bus and counter-attacking, and Atletico desperately trying to, to score. This type of context that gives like a longer team objective, so the team knows the situation, the team knows, uh, do we need to score? Do we need to score desperately? Do we need to defend desperately? Uh, these are just examples that when incorporating all this context, giving to a team that team objective, the players know the team objective and will execute towards that. So it's not just thinking frame after frame, but it's having that objective, uh, let's say match objective, what, what do we have to do now? And uh, so you will be able to see the situation of parking the bus, you will see the situation of sending the ball uh, in the mixer, uh, you will see time wasting, uh, you will see strikers that take more risk into attacking, they're not so conservative when they need to score. You will see defenders, uh, instead of uh, so the last man, instead of just rushing towards you, like really understanding the situation and seeing, okay, it's better if I contain and wait for this other defender to help. Like all of these things that create an emergent behavior that makes uh, the game much more human in that sense and much more fun to play like in consequence. Uh, on top of that, like uh, adding a lot of different runs uh, so that, that provide like a much more variety of opportunities for, for uh, passing lanes, uh, like uh, many, many things to make the game much better. And lastly, the, the thing you've talked about today is uh, updates and new things for player control. So yes. Do you want to talk a little bit about that too? Yeah, one of the feedback that, that we got from the community as well from last year that we introduced uh, true player motion with uh, step-based locomotion. That was when, when every like uh, step counted and so allowed us to have inertia and momentum. Was, so for us it was a fantastic change, uh, fantastic innovation, uh, but the feedback was that in certain situations, uh, so the gamers were not feeling absolute control. So it's too slow to turn or too slow this touch of the ball uh, like a lot of different things that they were not feeling well with it. So we said, okay, so we need to sit down and we really need to focus on responsiveness. And so instead of, of player control of responsiveness, that's a goal. It's really allow you that when you touch the pad, when you do something, the game does what you want at the moment you want, no frustrations. And so, so how do we achieve that? is adding tons of animations in terms of uh, little fast steps on the, on the locomotion system. Uh, it's adding much more touches when, when you're with the ball. So even if, when you're standing, it's not, uh, okay, get up and then touch the ball. So you start touching the ball when, when you are getting up. Uh, many more touches turning, uh, many more things like uh, traps, like assault traps that we never had in the past. Uh, we are also having like a newer path type of passes new type of uh, shooting. Uh, so it's basically adding content everywhere and adjusting uh, like a many, many of the different subsystems. So responsiveness is absolute, that, that's our goal. Excellent, sounds like quite a lot uh, changes and quite a lot more to come over the next uh, few months. Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna be talking in the future about uh, game modes, more gameplay stuff, uh, authenticity, so in terms of uh, leagues and, and some more visual things. Yeah, we're very proud of the game, that, that is how it's coming this year. Uh, I think it's playing really well, so it's really fun to play, but I hope uh, uh, your feedback first. And what's the current planned release date for the game? Uh, it's by the end of September, I don't really know exactly the date, I hope that they will tell you. <laughs> but it is by the end of September. Great. And what formats will it be out on the game? Uh, so the, the game that I am working on, the, the game that I'm building, is, is the Gen 4 PS4 Xbox One PC version. There will be a Gen 3, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and there will be other platforms over there, and uh, they will tell you as well, our friends, Tristan. Great. Thank you very much for your time today. Uh, thank you for coming, and I hope you enjoy the rest <laughs> of the day. Thank you.